snow tracks. It was winter time on the island of Sodor. It had snowed all night. The trees were white, the cottages were white, and even the Fat Controller's railway was white. There was not an engine in sight. At Tidmouth Sheds, the engines looked out. Percy was very excited. It snowed! Thomas didn't like the snow. Bother! I'll have to wear my heavy snow plough. I don't like snow. You can get stuck in it. Stuff and nonsense. Snow is soft, but I am strong. It won't bother me. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Gordon, you must take some trucks to Brendam Docks. They are needed for an important coal delivery. You are a strong engine. But snow is slippery. Puff the long way around. Yes, sir. Thomas, you must deliver bundles of firewood to the stations. Yes, sir. And then the Fat Controller left. Thomas puffed with pride. That's a very special job. Not as important as mine. I shall go straight to the docks. I shall steam over every hill I come to. Gordon pumped his pistons proudly. Puffed the long way round. That means, Gordon, don't go up any hills. Hills are not too steep for me. I am strong. I am the best. And Gordon wished out of Tidmouth Sheds. Gordon huffed and he puffed. His smoke was grey against the snowy white countryside. Soon, Gordon came to a hill. This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. And he chuffed right to the top. That was easy. But Gordon found going down the other side wasn't so easy. The rails were icy. Gordon's wheels slipped and slid. He went faster and faster. Perishing pistons! Spencer was huffing up the hill. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford were on board. They were having tea. Slow down, Gordon! But Gordon couldn't slow down. Slushy snow sprayed from his wheels. Spencer was covered from footplate to fender. Rattle my rods! I'm as dirty as a ditch! But Gordon didn't hear as he clickety-clacked on the icy tracks. Gordon came to another hill. It was even bigger. This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. But the tracks were icy. The snow was deep and the hill was very, very steep. Gordon steamed slower and slower. Bust my boiler. This is hard work. Wheel turn by wheel turn, Gordon huffed and puffed to the top of the hill. He felt very pleased. I am the strongest. I am the best. But at the bottom of the hill, there was deep, deep snow. The snow flew up all over Gordon's face. Bubbling boilers, I can't see. Gordon rattled off the main track and into a siding, straight into the back of some slate trucks. Gordon was covered in thick grey dust. Oh, the indignity! At least I can see now. And Gordon huffed on towards the docks. The snow was deeper and deeper and deeper. Gordon could hardly huff through it. This is hard work. Now Gordon was at the bottom of Gordon's Hill. Gordon's Hill was the biggest of all, and it was covered in thick, thick snow. Gordon's Hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. I am strong. I am the best. 
But Gordon didn't feel so strong anymore, and he didn't feel the best. Gordon puffed against the snow. Snow is soft, and I am strong. It won't bother me. But the snow wasn't soft. It had become a giant snowball. It grew bigger and bigger. Gordon started to huff slower and slower. He thought his boiler was going to burst. Oh, my! Just then, Thomas chuffed up behind Gordon. Thanks for clearing the tracks, Gordon. Now I can deliver the firewood faster. Then there was trouble. The giant snowball was too big and too heavy. It started to push Gordon back down the hill. Look out, Thomas! Cinders and ashes! Gordon and his trucks rolled back faster and faster. Thomas chuffed back faster and faster. He slipped into a siding and Gordon rolled round a bend. The giant snowball will surely miss us now. But Gordon was wrong. The giant snowball rolled down the track and crashed and bashed into Thomas. Help! Gordon saw Thomas and his truck of firewood lifted high in the air and derailed. Now it was Thomas who looked like a giant snowball. Luckily, no one was hurt. Gordon felt terrible. I'm not strong. And I'm not the best. It's a disaster. Gordon steamed slowly to Thomas. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'll huff my hardest to help you. Gordon heaved and hauled. He pushed and puffed, but the snow was too heavy. The snow was too thick. Gordon could not chuff through it to help his friend. I'm not strong enough, Thomas. I'll find Rocky. He's stronger than me. Gordon found Rocky at Brandon Docks. Hello, Thomas. I'll have you back on the tracks in no time. Soon, Thomas was no longer a snowball. He was a bright blue engine again. Thank you, Rocky. Now I must deliver my firewood. I'm very late. The station masters will be waiting, and they'll be very cold. I'll help you, Thomas. What about your very important job? I delivered my trucks to the docks. Now I can help you with your very important job. Thomas was happy to have his friends help. Thank you, Gordon. Thomas and Gordon chuffed cheerfully through the snow. And when they came to a hill, they always puffed around it. Together, Thomas and Gordon delivered the firewood to all the stations. The station masters were very pleased to see them. At last, Gordon and Thomas puffed home to Tidmouth Sheds. They were tired, but they were happy to have been really useful. Gordon wished grandly. I have something very important to say. No engine is special, and every engine is best. Thomas and his friends whistled. They all agreed with Gordon. Steamy Sodor. All the engines on Sodor like to be really useful. They huff and they puff to do their best for the Fat Controller's Railway. And sometimes that means doing a job they have never done before. One morning, the Fat Controller had a new job for Thomas. Victor has to go to the transfer yards. He has to see one of the little engines. He will be away all day. You must look after the steamworks, Thomas. Victor will tell you all you need to know. Make sure you listen carefully. Yes, sir. Thomas was excited. The Sodor Steamworks is one of my favourite places on the island. Today, I'm going to be in charge. That's a very important job, Thomas. Good luck. Thank you, Percy. And Thomas puffed proudly away to the Steamworks and his new job. Victor was waiting for Thomas at the Steamworks. Thomas was very excited. His boiler bubbled and his firebox fizzed. 
Hello, my friend. This is a big day for you. This teamworks will be very busy. Not too busy for me, Victor. I like being busy. <laughs> That's good, my friend. Now, when an engine comes in, you have to listen carefully to the problem. If you need help, ask Kevin. That's right, Thomas. When you're in a fix, look no further. Just ask Kevin. It'll save you bother. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Are you listening, Thomas? Yes, Victor. But Thomas was too excited to listen. He wanted to get on with his very important job. Don't worry, Victor. I know just what to do. Hurry, Victor. You'll be late for the little engines. Very well, my friend. Good luck. And Victor steamed away. Thomas was now in charge. Soon, Spencer steamed sulkily into the steamworks. His shiny silver paintwork was scratched and scuffed. Spencer was surprised to see Thomas. Huh, where's Victor? He's away today. I'm in charge. Spencer was worried. Oh my, Spencer. You are in a mess. I'll check you over from wheels to whistle. Put Spencer up on the hoist, please, Kevin. Kevin was worried. Are you sure, boss? I mean, Thomas, I don't think Spencer needs to go on the hoist. I mean, he needs a repaint, boss. But Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. He was too excited. He was in charge of the steamworks. Put Spencer up on the hoist, Kevin. Over here, Spencer. Uh, please, if you don't mind. Please. Uh, thank you. So Spencer huffed huffily to the hoist. Then Henry chuffed in. Henry wasn't well. He spluttered and stuttered. He wheezed and sneezed. Henry was surprised to see Thomas. What are you doing here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Henry <laughs> sighed. Then he wheezed. <laughs> then he sneezed. Footplates and fenders. I know just what's wrong with you, Henry. You have been given the wrong coal. Henry gasped. No, Thomas, it's not my... <coughs> but Thomas wasn't listening. Don't worry, Henry. We'll have you puffing proudly in no time. Kevin, bring over some of Henry's special coal, please. But, but what about Spencer, boss? But Thomas wasn't listening. Quick as you can, Kevin. So Kevin trundled to the coal. Spencer sat sniffily by the hoist. Henry spluttered and stuttered. And Thomas felt pleased and proud. I like being in charge of the steamworks. Then James steamed snootily in. Straw and twigs blocked his funnel. Why are you here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Bubbling boilers, you are in a mess. What happened to you? I can't puff properly. <laughs> I know just what you need. Kevin? Yes, boss. I mean, Thomas. James needs a new funnel. No, I don't. But Thomas wasn't listening to James. But what about Henry's coal? And Spencer on the hoist? Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. Find the spare funnel, please. Kevin was now very confused. To find the funnel, he had to put down Henry's coal. But first, he had to raise Spencer on the hoist. It was all too much for Kevin. Oh, dear, boss! Uh, Thomas! Don't worry, Kevin. I'm in charge. Then there was trouble. Kevin reeled and rolled back towards the hoist. And with a biff and a bash, he hit a big green button. That made Spencer shudder into the air. Trembling tracks, what's happening? Kevin gasped. <gasps> Heaving hooks! Sorry, Spencer! Then Kevin dropped Henry's coat right in front of Henry's nose. Bust my boiler and crashing coals! Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Ah! Mind my shiny red paintwork! James was so upset he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown. All over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Now he was covered from buffer to buffer in twig, soot and straw. 
Victor's wheels wobbled and his steam stuttered. <gasps> Sizzling so door. What has happened to my beautiful steamworks? Thomas looked at Victor and then at the mess and the muddle. Cinders and ashes. This is all my fault. No, boss. I mean, Thomas, I'm sure it's my fault. I'm sorry, boss. I did try to say, boss. No, Kevin. It's not your fault. I didn't listen to Victor. I didn't listen to you. And I didn't listen to my friends. I was too excited. And too silly. I think, my friend, you are right. What will you do now? I'm sorry to all of you. Now I'll listen to you, and I'll make sure you're all fixed properly. So Victor and Thomas went first to Spencer. I don't need checking from wheels to whistle. I need new paint for my scuffs and scratches. This time Thomas listened. Don't worry, Spencer. You'll be sparkling silver in no time. That made Spencer very happy. Next, Victor and Thomas talked to Henry. I have my special coal, but there's something wrong with my firebox. It makes me <coughs> wheeze and sneeze. Don't worry, Henry. Your firebox will be cleaned. You won't wheeze and sneeze anymore. And Thomas was right. Pumping pistons. No more wheezes and sneezes. That's much better. Lastly, Victor and Thomas listened to James. I don't need a new funnel. I need my old funnel cleaned and polished. James, you will have the most perfectly polished funnel on Sodor. Ah. James's funnel was shining like the sun. James smiled from fender to footplate. Soon, all the engines were fixed. They were ready to be really useful again. Well done, my friend. Time to go home. Not quite, Victor. It's time to say thank you to Kevin. Any time, boss. I mean, Thomas. <laughs> and everyone laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> Buzzy Bees. It was a fine summer morning on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining, the birds sang, the flowers bloomed. And Thomas clickety-clacked along the track to Brendam Docks. Thomas's good friend, Hero, was unloading at Brendam Docks. Good morning, Hero. The fat controller tells me I have a special special today for Farmer Trotter. Good morning, my friend. Yes, you do. Look. Thomas <gasps> gasped. Flatten my funnel. They look like small white wooden houses. Who lives in them? Bees, my good friend. Lots and lots of bees. Their houses are called hives. Inside the hives, the bees are very busy making honey. This made Thomas excited. The fat controller always has honey on his crumpets. I'll puff as fast as I can to deliver the beehives to Farmer Trotter. Suddenly, Hero was stern. Thomas, chuff slowly and smoothly. Take the truck through the woods. Then the bees will rest. You have to look after bees very carefully. Don't worry, Hero. I will. They'll be happy with me. Hero smiled. Very well. I have to deliver these crates. Then I must pick up some flowers from Farmer McCall. I will visit the bees when I've finished. Hero steamed slowly away. Thomas was coupled up to the beehives. <whistles> Off we go, bees! Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. Ahead, he saw the track through the woods. The other track ran past a field full of flowers and bright sunshine. The field with flowers is much prettier than the woods. I'm sure the bees would like that better. 
So Thomas didn't take the track through the wood, as Hero had told him to. Thomas huffed happily along. Buzzy bees are busy bees, and busy bees make honey. Buzzy bees are happy bees when it's warm and sunny. Suddenly, there was a buzzing and a bizzing. Thomas applied his brakes. Bust my buffers, what's that? Thomas looked over to the field. His bees were everywhere. They buzzed busily, flying from flower to flower. Thomas was surprised. Oh, no! Come back, bees! Come back to your hives! The bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing in the field. Thomas tried again. Please come back, bees. We'll be late for Farmer Trotter. But still, the bees weren't listening to Thomas. Fizzling fireboxes. I can't take the beehives to Farmer Trotter empty. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. The bees like flowers. I will chuff my hardest to Farmer McColl's and pick up the flatbed of flowers. Then the bees will buzz around my flowers and back to their hives. So Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed. Then he steamed swiftly away. Thomas arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. He saw the flatbed of flowers. I'm sure Hero won't mind if I borrow his flowers. I'll bring them back as soon as the bees are in their hives again. And Thomas huffed happily back to the field. The bees were still buzzing busily from flower to flower in the field. Then they saw Thomas's flowery flatbed. The buzzy bees left the field and buzzed all around Thomas. They flew into his funnel. They buzzed his boiler and whizzed his wheels. Trembling tracks! This flatbed of flowers wasn't a good idea. Go away, bees, please. Buzz into your hives and make honey. But the bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing. I must race like the wind. Then maybe the bees will be blown off my buffers and fly back to their hives. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. But the bees didn't mind the wind on their wings. They flew round Thomas like a buzzing cloud. Thomas chuffed and puffed to a siding. Very well, bees. If you won't leave me, I will leave you. Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed of flowers and he clickety-clacked the way down the track. Now the buzzy bees won't bother me. They're too busy making honey for the fat controller's tea. Thomas chuffed to a junction. Hero was there. Thomas was surprised to see his friend. Hello, Hero. You look puzzled. I am Thomas. Farmer McCall's flowers have disappeared, and you have still not delivered the bees to Farmer Trotter. He's waiting and worried. Thomas looked at his wise friend, Hero. He hadn't looked after the bees, he hadn't looked after their hives, and he hadn't taken the woodland track. But he had taken Hero's flowers. Hero, I have been very silly. I have been everything you told me not to be. But now I will do everything you told me to do. Please wait for me here. I will bring you back your flowers. Thomas's wheels started to whir and his boiler started to bubble. Thomas had a lot to do. Thomas puffed back to the flatbed of flowers. The bees were still buzzing, but Thomas didn't mind. Follow me, bees. I'll take you back to your hives. And Thomas wished away to the flatbed of beehives. Farmer Trotter is waiting for you, bees. You will like living on his farm. 
Then Thomas chuffed carefully away and took the track through the woods. The woods were deep and dark. The bees felt cold. It's time to go home, all you busy bees. It's time to make honey in the shade of the trees. And the busy bees buzzed into their hives. Farmer Trotter was waiting for Thomas. He was very pleased to see his new beehives. Thank you, Thomas. But why have you brought me all those flowers? They're not for you, Farmer Trotter. Here I was waiting for these. I must hurry. Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed down the track. Hero was waiting for Thomas. So, my good friend, here are my flowers. I'm sorry, Hero. You will be late, I know. But from these flowers, Farmer Trotter will have the best honey on Sodor. The two friends smiled. It had been a very busy, buzzy day. Thomas and the Pigs There are lots and lots of farms on the island of Sodor. There are farms with sheep. There are farms with cows. There are farms with goats. Thomas likes visiting all the farms. But his favourite farm of all was Farmer Trotter's pig farm. Thomas liked their curly tails and the funny noises they made. Thomas liked to visit Farmer Trotter's pig farm as often as he could. One day, Thomas was watching the pigs roll in the mud. Farmer Trotter was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Farmer Trotter. Hello, Thomas. I have some very special news. One of my pigs is going to have piglets today. Thomas was excited. I can't wait to see them. I need some soft straw for the piglets. I'd like you to go to Farmer McCall's right now to collect it. He'll be waiting for you. Thomas was happy to help. Yes, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away with his empty flatbed. On his way to Farmer McCall's, Thomas thought about the pigs. I'm sure the piglets will like the soft straw. I wonder if there's anything else they'd like. Thomas puffed up to the dairy. He saw Percy. Thomas told Percy all about the piglets. How exciting! I wish I could see them, but I have to deliver this milk. Thomas looked at the milk churns. An idea flew into his funnel. I'm sure the piglets would like some milk. May I have some? Of course you can, Thomas. So the milk churns were loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you, Percy. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And he steamed away. Thomas felt pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then, Thomas saw James. James was at an orchard. The trees were full of juicy red apples. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. Thomas told James all about the piglets. The piglets will soon be born. I must collect some soft straw for them. I wish I could see the piglets, but I have to deliver these boxes of apples to the village. Thomas looked at the juicy red apples. I'm sure the piglets would like some juicy red apples. May I have some? Of course you can. So Thomas's flatbed was loaded with lots and lots of juicy red apples. 
Thank you, James. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. Thomas chuffed quickly away. He felt very pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw some children. They were collecting shiny brown chestnuts. Hello. Thomas told the children all about the piglets. They were very excited. I'm sure the piglets would like some shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McCall's farm. Farmer McCall was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McCall. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples, and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McCall looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, the juicy red apples, and shiny brown chestnuts. Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples, and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotters. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw, and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McCall's as fast as I can. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. Thomas, I know something else the piglets would like. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he wheeshed. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McCall. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. Thank you, Farmer McCall. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly night time. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. Cinders and ashes. I'm too late. You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed and he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born. Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers. Look how small they are and how sweet. Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Oh, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. 
Thomas was so happy his axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. Creaky Cranky. It was the spring holiday on Sodor. There was to be a party for the children at the Duke and Duchess's new summer house. All the engines were very excited and very busy. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. James and Henry were passing through. Good morning, James. Good morning, Henry. Where are you puffing to? I'm taking these straw bales to the summer house for the children to climb on. I'm taking wood to make a stage for the children's show and barrels of lemonade to drink. How wonderful. I'll see you later at the summer house. Good morning, Cranky. What's good about it? It's the Duke and Duchess's party day. Party smarty. I don't go to parties. I'm stuck here loading and unloading all day. I haven't had a moment to rest my hook. That load is for me. It's eggs for the children to paint. Hurry up, Cranky. You're creaky, Cranky. What's the matter? Are the eggs too heavy a load for you? <laughs> Cranky didn't like Thomas's joke. He didn't like being called creaky. No, they're not too heavy for me. They're light as fluff. <laughs> You're not strong enough to pull anything heavier than fluff, tiny Thomas. That's why Henry and James have the heavy loads. Now, Thomas didn't like Cranky's joke. Fizzling fireboxes. I'm as strong as any other engine. You're not as strong as me. I can lift much heavier loads than you could ever pull. Thomas really didn't like that. We'll see, Cranky. I have lots of time to deliver the eggs. First, I have to prove Cranky wrong. James has a heavy load. I'll go and find James. So Thomas steamed sternly out of the docks. Thomas found James at the junction by the washdown. Hello, James. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of wooden barrels for you? You can stay here at the washdown. Then you'll be perfectly polished for the party. James thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So James was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of wood and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off for the docks. Thomas chuffed back into the docks. You again. What are you doing with that wood? This flatbed is very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift it. Cranky looked at the flatbed of wooden barrels. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the wood. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed into the air. Thomas's boiler buzzed. Told you so. You're still creaky cranky. And you're still tiny Thomas. That made Thomas very cross. I will prove Cranky wrong and still have time to deliver the eggs. I'm sure Henry had an even heavier load. I'll go and find Henry. So Thomas steamed stormily away. Thomas found Henry waiting by the coal hopper for his special coal. Hello, Henry. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of straw bales for you? Then you can wait here for your special coal. Henry thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So Henry was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of straw bales and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was very heavy. Puffing and puffing, Thomas set off once more for the docks. Soon, Thomas puffed back into the docks. You again? Now, what are you doing with those straw bales? This flatbed is very, very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift this. Cranky looked at the flatbed of straw bales. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the straw. Thomas watched and waited. 
With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised a flatbed of straw into the air. Thomas's funnel fizzed. Told you so. You're still creaky cranky. And you're still tiny Thomas. That made Thomas even crosser. More than ever, Thomas wanted to prove Creaky Cranky wrong. He had to find the heaviest thing he could. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Lift me, Cranky. Cranky looked at Thomas. He couldn't let Thomas win. Cranky's hook swung low over Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, and very, very slowly, Cranky raised Thomas high into the air. Burbling boilers! Creaky Cranky is lifting me! Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and judded. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh, no! Cranky's crane arm had broken, and it was all Thomas's fault. Thomas was stuck, high in the sky and blowing in the breeze. Then the Fat Controller arrived. Thomas! What are you doing up there? I'm sorry, sir. I was... You are causing confusion and delay. The Duke and Duchess have no wood, straw bales or eggs. Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken, and you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. The Duke and Duchess are waiting. Thomas felt very silly. Then the Fat Controller looked at Cranky. And you're as silly as Thomas. Cranky crumpled. The shame to be as silly as a steamy. Soon a workman had climbed up Cranky. Slowly and carefully, Thomas was lowered and landed with a jolt and a judder. Just as Spencer arrived. Dear, oh dear, Thomas, what a mess. Little engines can get into very big trouble. Thomas felt even sillier in front of Spencer, but he knew now that being strong was only good if you were also really useful, and he had to be really useful. Spencer, I need your help. You are very strong and can pull much heavier loads than me. Will you take the wood, the straw bales and the eggs to the summer house for me, please? It's my fault that Cranky is broken. I must put everything right as quickly as I can. Hmm, very well. Thank you. I'm sorry, Cranky. I know you're strong, stronger than me. I'll be back soon with the right parts to fix you. Then Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed out of the docks. Thomas wished like the wind all the way to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Cranky creaked and now he's cracked. He needs new parts. You've come to the right place, my friend. But sir, plenty here. We'll have Cranky up and lifting in no time. Soon Thomas's flatbed was loaded with new parts for Cranky. Thank you, Victor. Of course, my friend. Give Cranky my best. And Thomas huffed happily away. Thomas puffed into the docks with his heavy flatbed. Cranky was still looking crumpled. Here you are, Cranky. We'll have you fixed in no time. Thank you, Thomas. That's a heavy flatbed. You know, you're not tiny. And you're not creaky. Cranky laughed. <laughs> and that made Thomas <laughs> laugh too. <laughs> Hero helps out. The engines on the island of Sodor like to be busy. They heave and haul. They huff and puff. And most of all, they like to please the Fat Controller. One morning, Hero chuffed into Napford Station. There was hustle and bustle, noise and steam. It was another busy day at Knapford. Then the Fat Controller hurried onto the platform without his hat. Hero gasped. <gasps> sir, good morning, sir. I hope the day finds you well, sir. 
The day finds me with much too much to do, hero. That's how the day finds me. I can see, sir. What are you staring at, hero? Nothing, sir. Just your hat, sir. Excuse me. Edward Puff, then. Hello, hero. You look worried. Not at all. Then there was trouble. Blistering boilers. In all my long years, I've never seen that before. <coughs> hero was worried for the fat controller. Sir, can I help you, sir? It's a very busy day, Hero. I have to visit the Thin Controller. I must talk with him about the railways. Hero knew this was important. I understand, sir. I must be away from Knapford. Of course, sir. Now Edward was worried. Sir? Not now, Edward. Edward was still worried. I have to pick up visitors from Brendam Docks. I don't know where to take them. Hero didn't know where the visitors should go either, but he didn't want to bother the Fat Controller. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Take them to the hills, Edward. They will enjoy the hills. So Edward puffed away to Brendam Docks and the hills. Hero felt happy. He was master of the railway as he liked to be. Hero puffed up to the water tower. Thomas was there. He was taking on water. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. Where are you going, Thomas? To Knapford. I must ask the Fat Controller where to take these crates of benches and tables. Hero still didn't want to bother the Fat Controller. The Fat Controller is busy now, Thomas. He will tell you where to go later. You have time to visit your friend, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hero was happy. He was helping the Fat Controller. Hero steamed up to a junction. Percy was there. He had a flatbed full of quacking ducks. Hello, Percy. How are you? Percy was worried. Hello, Hero. These ducks are very noisy. They want to go swimming. I have to find the fat controller. He will tell me where I must take them for a swim. Hero still didn't want to bother the fat controller. The Fat Controller is very busy, Percy. Perhaps you could puff to the Finland. The ducks will be happy there. Thank you, Hero. Hero was happy. Helping the Fat Controller was the best job he had ever had. Hero huffed happily to a crossing. The Fat Controller was there. Hero, while I was with the Thin Controller, I heard worrying news. Farmer McCall is waiting for his ducks. There are no tables or benches for the concert at tea time. And Edward is late for a concert at the Town Hall. <gasps> Hero gasped. The Fat Controller was cross. The Fat Controller was cross with him. And it was all his fault. Hero felt worse than ever. He had been master of the railway, and now he was master of the muddle. I'm sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. I knew you were very busy. I wanted to help, so I told the engines what to do. I didn't want to bother you, sir. <gasps> the fat controller gasped. You didn't want to bother me? I am controller of the railway. Nothing is more important to me than my engines being really useful. Hero gulped. I know that now, sir. I'm not master of the railway. I'm master of the muddle. 
I can put this right. Please give me time. And Hero wished quickly away. Hero found Edward in the hills. Hello, Hero. My visitors are very happy. Good, Edward. But now, you must take the visitors to Knapford Station. The Fat Controller will give you your orders. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller, Hero. I was wrong, Edward. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. And Hero steamed swiftly away. Hero whooshed up to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. I'm having a wonderful time with the piglets. Good, Thomas, my friend. But now, you must puff as fast as you can to Knapford. The Fat Controller is waiting with orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller, Hero. I was wrong, Thomas. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. Bye, Hero. Hero clickety-clacked onto the Fenland track. Percy was there. The ducks were swimming happily. Hello, Percy. Hello, Hero. The ducks are very happy. I'm pleased to hear that, Percy. But now, you must take the ducks to Knapford. The Fat Controller has orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller. I was wrong, Percy. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. But how can I get the ducks back into their crate? I will help you, Percy. Hero blew his whistle. It sounded like a duck quacking. The ducks flapped and flew into their crates. Thank you, Hero. Later, the Fat Controller had given his orders to the engines. Now, you all know what you have to do. Chuff away and be really useful. Hero puffed forward. And what shall I do, sir? You, Hero, will do what you have always done. You will be helpful, Hero. Helping me. And nothing could have made Hero happier. The Lion of Sodor. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sky was blue and the sun was shining brightly. Thomas was chuffing cheerfully to Brendam Docks. He felt very happy. Thomas had to collect the special special, but he didn't know what it was. Hello, Cranky. Is my special ready? Yes, it is. The mayor is waiting for it at Knapford. You must puff very carefully. Thomas was puzzled. What is it, Cranky? It's the Lion of Sodor. Cinders and ashes, how exciting. I promise to take extra special care of it. I've never carried a real live lion before. When Cranky heard this, he was surprised. No, Thomas, the Lion of Sodor, isn't it? But Thomas was too excited to listen to Cranky. He was already puffing proudly out of the docks. Thomas huffed happily along. Then he met Henry. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Bust my buffers. That's exciting. I only have sticky syrup to deliver. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I promise to take extra special care of my lion. I think he might really like sticky syrup. Could I have some for him, Henry? Of course. Thomas's driver poured some sticky syrup into the lion's crate. Thank you, Henry. I have to hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Henry was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Thomas has made a mistake. Oh, stop, Thomas. Uh, the Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. 
Next, Thomas met Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Flat my funnel. How exciting. I only have to deliver fresh fish. I think my lion would really like fresh fish. May I have some for him, Edward? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some fresh fish into the lion's crate. Thank you, Edward. I must hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Edward was surprised. <gasps> Clattering carriages. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't it? But Thomas didn't stop and he didn't listen. Then Thomas saw Toby. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Buff my boiler. How exciting. I only have straw in my trucks. I'm sure my lion would really like some soft straw to lie on. May I have some for him, Toby? Of course. Thomas's driver put some soft straw into the lion's crate. Thank you, Toby. I really have to hurry. The mayor will be waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Toby was surprised. Oh, no. Trembling trucks. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor is not But Thomas didn't stop and he didn't listen. Thomas's pistons pumped and his wheels whirred. He couldn't wait to deliver his lion. He chuffed his hardest and raced on towards Knapford Station. At last, Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford. The fat controller was there, and so were the other engines. I'm very excited, Thomas. This is a big day. The Lion of Sodor is here. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed, and he pulled away to join the other engines. The workman carefully opened the lion's crate. Then the engines gasped. The Lion of Sodor wasn't a real lion at all. It was a statue. And now it was covered in sticky syrup, fresh fish and straw. The fat controller was cross. Thomas, this is a terrible mess. Gordon and James <laughs> laughed. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I thought I had a real lion in my crate. I wanted to take extra special care of it. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue. So the fat controller told Thomas all about the Lion of Sodor, and the other engines listened carefully. So you see, Thomas, it was the most famous statue on Sodor. Then it broke. This is the shiny new statue we have been waiting for. The mayor is coming at tea time. And now look at it. I'll make sure it's clean, sir. I promise. The Lion of Sodor will be shiny and new again in no time. Very well, Thomas. Thomas still felt very silly. Cheer up, Thomas. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue either. It all happened a long, long time ago. Not many engines remember that time. We tried to tell you, but you didn't stop. I'm sorry, Henry. I should have listened. Now I must hurry. I must get the line of Sodor cleaned right away. Why don't you take it to the washdown? This time, Thomas listened. What a good idea. Thank you, Henry. Thomas was coupled to the flatbed, and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas took the line of Sodor to the washdown. Soon, the sticky mess was washed off. That looks much better, Thomas. But the statue isn't shiny. Take it to the steamworks, Thomas. They'll polish it until it sparkles and shines. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Edward. That's a very good idea. Victor will know just what to do. And Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the steamworks. 
Workmen polished the statue until it shone and sparkled, just as Edward had said. The line of Sodor looks much better now, Thomas. But it's nearly tea time. The mail will soon be at Knapford, and it's a long way. Take the track by the windmill. That'll get you there in time. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Toby. That's a good idea. So Thomas took the shortcut past the windmill. He huffed and puffed as fast as his pistons could pump towards Knapford. Children cheered and passengers waved as Thomas chuffed by. Everyone wanted to see the Lion of Sodor. And everyone wanted Thomas to stop. I can't stop now. I mustn't be late. The mail will be at Knapford and he won't wait. And Thomas whooshed on his way. Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford Station. The mayor had just arrived. He was delighted to see the new Lion of Sodor. The statue shone and sparkled in the sun. Well done, Thomas. This is the finest statue I've ever seen. And the cleanest. <laughs> Everyone cheered, and Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. A blooming mess. It was a special day on the island of Sodor. Natford Station was going to be decorated. All the engines were very busy and very excited. The fat controller was at Tidmouth Sheds. Knapford Station is being decorated. There are lots of jobs to do. Thomas, you must go to the quarry and collect slate for the new roof. Yes, sir. Emily, you must go to Maithwaite Station and collect the flowers for the new window boxes. Flowers? How lovely! I know all about flowers. I know that buttercups are yellow. Emily! And then take them to Knapford Station. Yes, sir. Emily huffed happily to Maithwaite Station. She passed Toby. Toby was delivering wood for Knapford's new floors. Hello, Toby. Hello, Emily. Then Emily passed James. James was delivering pots of paint to paint Knapford's new walls. Hello, James. Good morning, Emily. Emily puffed up to a junction. Mavis was on the bridge above. Hello, Mavis. But Mavis didn't say hello to Emily. Emily was surprised. Mavis? Mavis? Hello? Mavis still didn't say hello to Emily. Emily wondered what was wrong with Mavis. I know what's wrong. Mavis must be feeling sad today. At Maithwaite Station, Emily buffered up to the flatbed of flowers. There are a lot of different flowers here, Emily. Emily knew the names of all the flowers, but she didn't say a word. She was thinking about Mavis. She wanted to make Mavis happy. Then, an idea flew into her funnel. I'm sure flowers would make Mavis happy. I have lots of them. I can leave some of them at the quarry for Mavis. So Emily didn't puff straight to Knapford Station with the flowers. She took the track to the quarry instead. Emily huffed happily into the quarry. She couldn't see Mavis anywhere. I know. I'll decorate the quarry with flowers. That will make Mavis very happy when she comes back. 
Emily looked for a place to put some flowers. This is the perfect place. Mavis will see the flowers here as soon as she arrives. Emily felt very pleased with herself. Now, hmm, I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Edward puff into the quarry behind her. But she did hear the loud crash. Fizzling fireboxes. What was that? Edward had crashed straight into the flatbed of flowers and rolled towards the hopper. Edward, look out! Those flowers are going to make Mavis happy. Pardon? Edward was confused. I'm sure flowers by the hopper would make Mavis happy. The hopper's so grey and dusty. Emily felt even more pleased with herself. Now, I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Thomas reverse towards the hopper behind her. But she did hear the loud crash. Bubbling boilers! What was that? Cinders and ashes! Bust my buffers! Watch out for the flowers! You're going to make Mavis happy! At that moment, Mavis pulled into the quarry. Whatever has happened? Emily looked at Mavis. Mavis wasn't happy. She was very upset. What has happened to my quarry? And what are those flowers doing here? Emily gasped. The flowers haven't made Mavis happy. The quarry is in a terrible mess. And it's all my fault. Emily chuffed up to Mavis. You didn't say hello today, so I thought you were sad. I brought the flowers because I wanted to make you happy. Mavis sighed. I wasn't sad. I didn't say hello because I was thinking about all the jobs I had to do today. Emily felt very silly. I wish I had asked if you were sad. Then I wouldn't have brought the flowers and the quarry wouldn't be in a terrible mess. Mavis looked at the mess. She looked very sad. Emily wanted to think of a way to make Mavis happy. And now she knew she had to ask. Mavis, what would make you happy? I would like the quarry to be tidy and all the engines to be really useful. Emily felt very pleased she had asked Mavis. Now she knew exactly what to do to make Mavis happy. I can't move. I'm covered in sleigh dust and my firebox has gone out. Don't worry, Thomas. I'll shunt you over to the coal hopper. You'll soon be burning brightly again. Thank you, Emily. So Emily worked hard. She puffed and she huffed and she heaved Thomas to the coal hopper. Then she biffed and she bashed the flower beds away from the hopper so that Edward could shunt his truck to be filled. Now, the quarry is tidy again and all the engines are being really useful. Is there anything else that would make you happy? Yes, I want you to deliver the flowers to Knapford Station, where they should be. Right away, Mavis. At last, Emily arrived at Knapford Station. Here are the flowers for the new flower boxes. Thank you, Emily. Emily watched as the flowers were unloaded. They looked very pretty. Did you know, Thomas, that those yellow flowers are called buttercups? And those red ones, Edward, are called roses? And those white ones are daisies. Mavis puffed up. 
She was smiling. My! You're smiling, Mavis. Are you happy? I am. Those flowers look wonderful. And that made Emily happy too. The biggest present of all. For all the engines on the island of Sodor, there are jobs to be done, visitors to meet, and friends to greet. One day, there was a very special friend to greet. Hero was coming back to Sodor. He was to help with the summer visitors. Thomas and Percy waited for him at Brendam Docks. I'm so excited, my firebox is fizzing. And my boiler is bubbling. Hero, our special friend, is coming back to Sodor. Hello, my good friends. I have missed you. We missed you too, Hero. The three engines tooted and hooted with happiness. Welcome back, Hero. First, you must go to the steamworks. Victor will check your engine after your long journey. Of course, sir. Every day, I want to be a really useful engine. Then, you must go to Knapford Station. I will meet you there. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Hero puffed proudly away. I want there to be a welcome party for Hero at Knapford. Percy, you must collect Lady Hat and bring her to the party. Thomas, you must tell the engines to chuff quickly to Knapford for the party. Then the Fat Controller left. Thomas and Percy were excited. Oh my! A welcome party will make Hero very happy. A welcome present would make Hero even happier. That's a good idea. I must go now, Thomas. Lady Hat will be waiting. Then Thomas steams slowly away. I'm sure I'll find something special for Hero. I'll look as I puff around the island, telling my friends about the party. Thomas clickety-clacked along the track. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at Farmer McColl's farm. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to Farmer McColl's farm. Emily was there. She was collecting straw. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's exciting. Good luck, Thomas. Emily puffed away. Thomas didn't tell her about the party at Knapford. He was too busy looking for a welcome present. Thomas saw the big brown barn. Perhaps Hero would like a barn. He could keep special things safe in a barn. But the barn is too big. And Thomas steamed slowly away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at the quarry. So Thomas huffed happily to the quarry. Mavis, James, Toby and Henry were there. They were busy shunting slate trucks. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Henry, James and Toby chuffed away to shun trucks. Thomas didn't tell them about the party at Knapford. Thomas looked all around the quarry, but all he could see was Sodor Slate. Slate is very special to Sodor, but... Slate is too small to be a present. I must look for something else. So Thomas chuffed away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then Thomas gasped. The steamworks. 
I'm sure there'll be something special there. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully to the steamworks. Hello, Kevin. I'm looking for a welcome present for Hero. It has to be something special. Thomas saw an old bell. I'm sure Hero would like a bell. Then everyone would hear him coming. Good idea, Thomas. Good idea. But when Kevin picked up the bell, it clanged and clanked. It rang and rattled. Trembling tracks. That's too noisy. Hero will soon be at Napford to see the fat controller. Bust my buffers. I must hurry. Thomas raced out of the steamworks. He didn't tell Victor and Kevin about the party either. Thomas raced into Knapford Station. Hero was waiting, all alone. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes. I haven't found a welcome present for Hero. And I haven't told anyone about the party. This won't make Hero happy. Thomas felt terrible. Then his boiler bubbled and his wheels whirred. Hello, Hero. Goodbye, Hero. And Thomas steamed swiftly out of the station. Thomas puffed to Farmer McCall's. Emily, chuff as fast as you can to Knapford. The Fat Controller is having a welcome party for Hero. Tell everyone you pass. Thomas, I've had a marvellous idea for a special present for Hero. I'm sure he would like a bright, shiny dome. Victor must have one. Thomas was stern. Thank you, Emily. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Mavis, Toby, James and Henry were still at the quarry. You must all chuff to Knapford as fast as you can for Hero's welcome party. Thomas, I think I know exactly what Hero would like as a special present. A new glowing lamp. That would be very special. Thomas was firm. Thank you, Henry. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Kevin, please tell all the engines to race to Knapford for Hero's party. My friend, Kevin and I have been thinking, what about a new shiny buffer for Hero? I think Hero would find that very special. Don't you think so, Buzz? Uh, Thomas? Thomas knew what he thought. I think now is not the time to find presents. Thank you, but you must tell the engines to hurry, please. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Thomas clickety-clacked down the track, this way and that, telling his friends all about the party. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. His face was red and his firebox glowed. Thomas, where have you been? Hero's welcome party is almost over. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to find your welcome present, Hero. Something special from Sodor. But I couldn't find anything. I'm sorry. Hero smiled. Thomas, my friend, you must not worry. My welcome present is right here. Being with my friends is the biggest present of all. And the most special present from Sodor. There is nothing more special. Then Thomas smiled and smiled. He knew Hero was right, and so did all his friends. Splish, splash, splosh. It had been raining and pouring on the island of Sodor. The engines were splattered and sploshed with mud. Thomas liked the rain. It splish-splashed on his boiler and pitter-patted on his paintwork. Thomas and Rosie had biffed and bashed all day at the shunting yards. Now it was time to go. Come on, Rosie. I'll race you to Tidmouth Shed. The two friends puffed along the tracks, straight through a very big puddle. Whee! Thomas and Rosie were splashed from footplate to fender in muddy rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun! 
Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Thomas reversed slowly. Then he pumped his pistons. Here I come, Rosie. Splish, splash, splash. <laughs> That's a good game. Here I come, Thomas. Splish, splash, splash. <laughs> 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 Muddy water splattered everywhere. Then the fat controller arrived. He had some important news. Alicia Botti is to sing at a concert in the town hall. The concert will be followed by a grand tea. That's exciting. What fun. Thomas, you must go straight to the washdown. Then you are to collect Miss Botti and myself from Dry All Station. We will be waiting for you. Yes, sir. Rosie, you must collect Annie and Clarabel and take them to dry or for Thomas. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. See you later, Rosie. And Thomas and Rosie chuff quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the junction to the washdown. He saw a very big puddle on the other track. Charlie was waiting right by it. He was very muddy. Splashing Rosie was such good fun. I'm sure Charlie would like my game too. And I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. So Thomas didn't take the track to the washdown. He took the track through the middle of the very big puddle. Here I come, Charlie. Splish, splash, splash. <laughs> Bust my buffers. That's a good game. Thomas huffed happily on. Hooray! This is fun! Now Thomas wanted to find more puddles. He couldn't wait to play his game with the other engines. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff left to the washdown. Then he saw a very big puddle on the right track. Emily was waiting. Emily's muddy already. I'm sure she'd like my game. And I'm sure I have time for another puddle before the washdown. Here I come, Emily! Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over Emily and all over Emily's flower trucks. Fizzling fireboxes! I have to take this flower to the bakery to make the cakes for Alicia Botti's tea. Now Thomas has ruined it. Thomas didn't know he had splashed Emily's flower trucks. This is fun! Splish, splash, splash! I'll soon need a wash! <laughs> and Thomas chuffed on, chuckling. At the next junction, Thomas waited to chuff to the washdown. Then he saw a very big puddle right beside James. James is muddy already. I'm sure he'd like my game. And I'm sure I have time for just one more puddle before the washdown. Here I come, James! Splish, splash, splash! And Thomas <laughs> steamed away laughing. Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over James and all over the ripe strawberries on his flatbed. Blistering boilers! These strawberries were for Alicia Botti's cakes. Now they're ruined! Thomas didn't know he had splashed James's strawberries. This is fun! Splish, splash, splash! I'll soon need a wash! And Thomas puffed on happily. Thomas chuffed up to the next junction. Now it was getting late. I know there'll be a very big puddle along the track by the river. I'm sure I have time for one last puddle before the washdown. So Thomas took the left track that went along the river. Ahead of him, there was a very big puddle. My! This is the biggest puddle ever! Here I come! Splish! Splash! Splash! Then there was trouble. Muddy water flew high into the air and splooshed down all over Alicia Botti and the Fat Controller. Thomas! Thomas screeched to a stop and reversed slowly. 
he saw that he had splish, splash, bloshed Alicia Botty and the Fat Controller. Cinders and ashes. Look what you've done to Miss Botty. She's soaked. Also, Thomas, I hear from the dairy manager that you ruined the flour and strawberries for Miss Botty's grand tea. This is a disaster. Thomas felt terrible. He tried to puff forward, but he couldn't. Oh, no. The big puddle had put out his firebox. This game isn't fun anymore. It's all gone wrong. Then Thomas heard Rosie's whistle. Rosie, please help me. I've splish, splashed, bloshed into trouble. Oh, dear, Thomas. Of course I will. Don't worry. Rosie heaved and huffed Thomas onto dry tracks. With my dry coal, Thomas, your boiler will soon be bubbling. Thank you, Rosie. Now I can't go to collect the Fat Controller and Alicia Botty. Would you take my special for me? Of course I will. I'll go right away. Later, Thomas was once more steaming happily. He pulled up at a junction. There was a very big puddle on the right track. Look at that big puddle. It's perfect for splish, splash, sploshing. No, I'm not going to splish, splash, splosh anymore. I must make sure that Alicia Botty's grand tea is on time. And Thomas puffed along the left track to the bakery and away from the big puddle. Thomas arrived just as James and Emily had delivered fresh strawberries and flour to the bakery. Your silly game means we'll be late for the concert. No, you won't. I'll wait here for the cakes, then I'll deliver them. You can go to the washdown, then you'll both be clean for the concert. Thank you, Thomas. Now I'll be shiny and best, and gleam more than the rest. Thomas puffed in with the fresh strawberry cakes for the grand tea. You're just in time, Thomas. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I caused confusion and delay. Rosie puffed up to Thomas. I found another puddle. It's perfect for our game. We can play again. No, thank you, Rosie. I think I've done enough splish, splash, sploshing for one day.